MMOs have been around for a long time, going all the way back to Meridian 59, which y'all constantly remind me about when I talk about Ultima Online being in the first MMO. So, so Meridian 59, are we good? God, there's gonna be another one, isn't there? It's gonna be like some other, going all the way back to whatever the first MMO is. There's been some crazy stories in MMOs, <laughs> like some, some borderline unbelievable stories at times, and some that are just, kind of funny and I actually got to experience one of these firsthand now for the research for this video I want to give credit to games radar massively op mmorpg.com and gadget.com screen rant and mmogames.com all of these were kind of essential for me to get the information needed to make this video happen so thank you to all the gaming journalists that put out wonderful articles I um, highly highly recommend the massively op archaeologist section for example that that was God, that was so helpful like and they're written very well i really recommend over going over there to massively op but not yet we've got five crazy things that have happened in mmos over the years let's start with the first one which is probably the one out of these five that is the most likely to get this video demonetized unless i'm very careful about how I talk about it. So number five is about a game called Second Life. Second Life was an ambitious game and it was kind of at the forefront of game to real life economies. One person who capitalized on the merging of these economies was known in game as Ant Chung, who purchased acres of virtual land and charged others to use it. Essentially, a virtual landlord. Ant became a millionaire in real life, not in Second Life, and they were interviewed by CNET. Well, what good would an interview in Second Life be without? <laughs> so this interview was interrupted by floating disembodied. Yeah, um, I don't really know how else to put it. Like, I, it's, I'm not I'm not going to say it, but that <laughs> interviews are hard enough without issues like this popping up, rising when you least expect it especially if the interview has to finish early i should apologize i couldn't help myself with this one but one thing's for sure with second life is if it's known for anything it's how wholesome that game is number four on our list is going to be the ghsc heist in eve online okay so full disclosure here i've probably only played about maybe 10 minutes maybe 20 minutes of eve online the giant space sim never really appealed to me, and I think I booted it up on a rebound after a messy breakup with EverQuest, where I quickly realized just how good I had it with my former paramour. But that's not what this video is about. The Guiding Hand Social Club, GHSC, was a corporation in E, which I believe is similar to a guild or a clan in other games. The focus of this corporation was to be intergalactic spies. Okay, which honestly, that sounds pretty cool. Maybe I should, maybe, maybe I should try EVE Online again. You know, like, no, no, you're not gonna like it. Don't even try just move on. But essentially what happens with GHSC is that they infiltrated another corporation's roster and robbed them of an astronomical amount of in-game items totaling 16,000 USD. 16,000 USD. But that's not all. But wait, there's more. Now, PC Gamer covered the story and they, there was a bit of added drama in their, they, their retelling. So this was a plan that was 10 months in the making that ended with the robbery and an assassination of the CEO of Ubiquisera, UQS. I'd recommend reading PC Gamer's article if you want the dramatized version of events. You know, I mean, it was just like, oh, it was, it sounded so cool. Like it sounded like a sci-fi movie. It sounded like the plot to a sci-fi movie like mixed with a, a heist movie. Like this is what like Mandalorian could have been at certain points. It was, oh, Star Wars. Yeah, so it, it was really an interesting read. I, I recommend it. Number three. So number three, this is the one, this is the one that I was present for, partially. We're talking about the sleeper in EverQuest. Not the sleeper from progression servers. Sleeper when it was brand new 
The way that this event was handled and the way that an intrepid group of EverQuest players shocked the devs kind of led to two different crazy experiences happening in game. One that was intended and one that was never intended. So we're going to talk about both of those because the one that I was present for was how it was supposed to go. Now, I remember when the sleeper was awakened on my server, there was just crazy widespread panic because what was supposed to happen with this event is once the sleeper was awakened, it would rampage through zones in EverQuest, specifically in Velius. It would go from its place in Sleeper's Tomb to Sky Shrine. And that's where it would, it would, it would, so it was this big whole story event, but it would, as it would go through those zones, it would kill things, including players. I remember like just hearing about like zone wide death touches and things like that. Now, granted at the time when I was playing, cause this was in the original run of Velius on EverQuest, there weren't the same kind of global chat features that are in game now. And there wasn't something like discord hanging out so that you could have more communication. So there's a part of this where I'm wondering like what was myth and what was true, but it was, it was just one of those cool experiences to go through where it's like, oh no, there's this big event happening in the game and you get to just kind of experience it. But what happens when the way that the script is supposed to run doesn't happen because EverQuest players won't give up. While the devs had this script in place, they hadn't planned on the Ralos Zex server, PVP server in EverQuest. Karafirm is a story event. It's not really a raid boss, or it wasn't in the, at that time. But that didn't stop the unthinkable from happening, in perhaps the most unlikeliest of places. By the time the Ralos Zek PVP server hatched their plan, Sleeper had already rampaged across several other servers. Ralos Zek was known for its ruthless PvP, not its top tier raid talent. That kind of changed in November of 2003, when a rogue guild decided to wake the sleeper and other guilds converged to prevent the awakening to maintain the pre-sleeper loot tables. Scepter of Destruction, anyone? The warders still fell though, and the sleeper awoke. And that's when something incredible happened. The guilds converged on the awakened beast and began what would be a battle of the ages for over three hours as battle-hardened PvP players hurled themselves at the Prismatic Dragon. Countless lost levels later, Sony Online Entertainment stepped in with the Sleeper at 26% of its HP, fearing the unexpected ramifications if the Sleeper died. Remember, this dragon was not a raid boss that was intended to die. It was supposed to be a story catalyst. It was a script and players were trying to break it and they were doing so successfully. So locking at 26% prevented it from dying and the player, everybody went home unhappy. So after lengthy protests, EverQuest players were given another shot on November 17th. And with more than 200 steadfast souls joining in on the assault, working for over four hours, the sleeper was felled and dropped. Nothing. You get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir. There was no loot, no trophies, but they received official recognition from SOE for their kill, and it stands as an incredible moment in MMO history when the unkillable boss was killed in the last place one might think for a collaboration, a PvP server. Number two on our list, Lord British, Ultima Online. Before Richard Garriott became synonymous with space travel and NFTs and failed MMOs, he was Lord British in Ultima Online. One of the absolute coolest things Richard Garriott did in the heyday of Ultima Online was to log in as Lord British. Lord British was an invulnerable character, but it was the creator of the game interacting with you. I actually remember being able to see this while I was playing. It was just a really cool thing to go and see the creator of the game as an avatar in game. It just added to the whole mystique of the game, but one day things did not go as planned. So in the past, Lord British had always been invulnerable. But one fateful day, Richard Garriott forgot to activate this and a legendary player by the name of Reigns capitalized on the incredible series of events. First, there was the lack of a vulnerability. 
Second, devs had turned off the guards to reduce lag. And third, he managed to actually steal a scroll for the spell Firefield from another player. Reigns cast the spell, which created a wall of flame beneath Lord British. And that's when the unexpected happened. Rather than Reigns being struck down for his audacity, Lord British collapsed to everyone's shock. Perhaps even more so to both Richard Garriott and Reigns. My favorite part of the story though, isn't the death of Lord British, which is cool on its own, own merit. It's what the devs decided to do after the fact. They didn't know it was Reigns who had, who had killed everybody and, and Reigns said that he ran away. <laughs> So what they did was they summoned a bunch of demons and those demons indiscriminately killed the gathered crowd that was just there to see Lord British and Richard Garriott. Now, <laughs> I think if I had been there and like experiencing that, I would have been pissed at the time that the devs had just killed me off with uh, summoned demons. But, but I think like looking back at it now, that just sounds like a really cool thing to have been a part of. Really interesting thing. You know, like just like, yeah, yeah, you remember? Yeah, you know what I mean? So, number one story. Some of you have already probably guessed it by now. I'm curious if you've guessed it. And before we get to number one, here's a word from our, no, we don't have a, we don't have a sponsor. Are you kidding? We have, we have, we just, we just hit a thousand scratch. We don't have any sponsors here um, yet. But what I want to ask of you all is in the comments below, I want to hear your crazy MMO stories. What are some of the things that make that give you pause to think about? And like, they can be funny, they can be emotional. What What are your stories that are just crazy? What What makes you you think about that MMO, that moment in a game that just stands out? For me, I, I'm sure there's a couple different ones I could come up with. That sleeper one, that's kind of up there. Getting to experience that firsthand, that's kind of up there. But let me know. Let, let, let all of us know down in the comments. What is your craziest MMO story? The so number one is going to be the blood plague in World of Warcraft. How could we not go with the blood plague in World of Warcraft? This has to be one of the craziest cases of unintended consequences. If killing the sleeper was an example of players overcoming long-standing animosity and working together to, towards a common goal to achieve something incredible, then this is an example of how people in MMOs can just be straight up dicks and just really fuck things up for everyone. The premise here is simple. A 20 person raid, the Zul'Gurub raid, went live in September of 2005 with patch 1.7. World of Warcraft at this point hadn't even been out a year, having launched in November of 2004. One of the boss fights, Akara the Soul Flayer, infected individuals with corrupted blood a dot that would spread to others in close proximity. Generally not an issue as it would be contained in the dungeon, except for hunters. Some, let's call them creative <laughs> players, realized they could infect their hunter pets with corrupted blood, dismiss them, and they'd still have the dot when they were resummoned. These lovely, enterprising individuals then went to places like Orgrimmar packed with players of all levels and unleashed their deadly payload. Thousands of players would fall to the scourge as it lit the various capital cities on fire. Players began to distance themselves from each other with some cheering on the player made event from the dev mistakes, while others bemoaned the griefing it caused. Wherever you fall on that, it was an event. It was a world spanning event. And it was something that would came spawned from just a very innocuous dev mistake of not considering what happens when a pet gets resummoned. But I'm not gonna leave you with that. I'm not gonna leave you with just five. I've got two quick bonus stories. One of these is a bit older. One of them's a bit newer. So our first bonus is going to be pizza. Anyone who played EverQuest 2 in its in its early stages may remember Slash Pizza. So Slash Pizza was a command in the game that was an official partnership between EverQuest 2 and Pizza Hut. You know, you can't really make that up. I don't think it's been repeated since and I as far as I know, this is the first instance of it. Slash Pizza would order you a pizza. You could get one ordered to your house while playing your character in EverQuest 2. I mean, at the time, I guess, I guess there was some 
there is something to it, right? Because 2005, you probably had to call, you know, it was, it was, it was a different time. It was a bit more of a pain in the ass to get a pizza delivered to your house than it is now. So yeah, I get it, I guess. Though kind of weird. I never, I never used it. I don't know anyone who did. <laughs> I hope Pizza Hut got their money's worth. Now this last one is a bit more recent. This last bonus is about the game launch of New World. And this to me, I think I, I didn't really fully grasp how weird and, and insane this was until I started, it really until I, until I got some distance from it. The launch of New World was, was marred by a lot of things, but there's two bugs that I think really stand out as just how did it get to launch this way? And that's not why New World is struggling now, these bugs, although they did contribute to some people leaving. I think there's there's a lot of other reasons, but but honestly, how, Amazon? How do you have a bug, an invulnerability bug, from moving the window, from literally minimizing your window and moving it? And that would cause an invulnerability bug. And yes, there were some things to it where you had to do certain things, but, but still, but that wasn't as bad to me as the second one, where you could inject HTML into chat. That meant that people were getting giant images on their screens from people putting it in chat. Now, this, this led to some comical things like the sausage, the giant sausage image. Not that kind of sausage. Get your heads out out of the gutter. That led to led to images of the the sa a sausage or giant yellow squares on players' screens, and there was even reports of it crashing players' games. But mostly, it would just you know <laughs> blind the player. So obviously, an issue, a big issue. But it's still kind of funny. It'll go down. It'll go down as as some of the strangest strangest one of the strangest launches I've ever experienced for sure. My name is Redbeard Flynn. I had a lot of fun doing this video. I hope you enjoyed listening and watching with me, and I look forward to seeing you again next week.